All right, shotties. I heard your request and I'm answering it. Here's the Barbados video on my living arrangements, how I set it up and where I lived. You ready? Let's go. All right, number one, I personally recommend Airbnb. You know, honestly, I tried working with the whole realtor thing. That didn't work. If you're staying less than six months, I recommend not even looking into the realtor situation because right off bat, a lot of these locations will charge you double because you're staying shorter than six months. Yes, yes. Whether it's furnished, unfurnished, none of that stuff matters. They're gonna charge you double. So the reason why I say Airbnb is because it's quick. Like, I can't tell you how much time I spent going back and forth between realtors, contacting realtors, getting in contact with a realtor, Realtor, getting them to call me back, getting their recommendations for where I can stay. It was just a lot of wasted time, honestly. And I feel like you could just hop on Airbnb, plug in where you want to stay, and then, you know, how much you want to spend, how many number of rooms you want, etc. And it's just easier. I wasted way too much time dealing with the other outside source or other sources. So my personal advice, just go Airbnb or the other one that I mentioned. Okay, so I mentioned figuring out where you want to stay. My personal advice is stay on the south or the west coast. I like the south coast and I'm so happy that I didn't end up staying on the west coast. The west coast is somewhere great to visit. It's the platinum coast. And of course it depends on who you are and what type of person you are, etc. But I like city life. I like to see activity when I step outside of my house. I love that and I especially want to be around a lot of locals almost everywhere I go, honestly. When it comes to the west coast, it's called the platinum coast because first of all, it's more expensive. So keep that in mind. That's something to keep in mind when you're thinking about your budget, etc. It will be more expensive, but you definitely see a lot more tourists on that side. Just giving you heads up, okay? Now it is beautiful and they have, it's my understanding some of the best restaurants are on that side, but I don't know if people are just saying that because it costs more, I don't know. You know sometimes that's the thing. But on the South, I found that I saw more younger people like me, more single people and more local people, which is what I wanted. All right. So my recommendation is the South. I feel like it's more accessible to get to different places like the supermarket or hop on a ZR. If you haven't watched my video about getting around in Barbados, you should actually watch this one. I mentioned the ZR. It's like, think New York dollar van basically, but it's public transportation, cheap transportation, if you choose to do public transportation. And they do have them on the platinum coast, but it's my understanding that they're more accessible on the South. If I'm incorrect, note it in the comments. I don't have a problem with being corrected, y'all. Please, this is a community, sharing is caring. And then I found that a lot of the events that I was attending were on the South Coast. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. A lot of my friends that I made the expats were staying on the South Coast. Honestly, I only knew two people on the West Coast. Let me just summarize it that way. Now you do the math. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these tips. They're helpful, right? If they are, go ahead and click the like button and let the algorithm know that this is a good video and it shares it with other people. Number three, ask for a discount. So if we're going with my recommendation of Airbnb, you have a couple of options. Right off bat, Airbnb will give you a discount if you're staying long-term. So this isn't for my tourists who are visiting just for a week. If you're staying long-term, that means over, I'd say two months, I think the discount usually kicks in after two or three months. It'll automatically give you a discount usually. But I'm of the mindset of don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. So I just asked for another discount. Why not? It's up to them if they want to say no, you know? And the judgment's on you, you know? Like if it's locals, you might have a different viewpoint on that, right? As opposed to some expats that are there renting their Airbnb. But I found that when I asked most people, they were willing to increase the discount. And even if it's increased by 10%, right? It's usually like 20% to 30%. If they add an extra 10%, that is great, right? Now, there's a way to ask. You definitely don't want to be like, can I get a discount? I would say something like, well, considering the fact that this is four to six months, if you're staying for that long, would it be possible to apply a discount of 40%? And then I would sugarcoat everything else, the words surrounding it, like, hey, Helen, nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, it's an inside joke with my mom. Okay, really quick side note. Growing up, my mom, and she's West Indian, always used to pull, to me, I thought these random names for any example that she gave. So Tom, or Dick, or Harry, and I'm like, where do you get these names from? Because a lot of people I knew who were black, African-American, did not have these names. But I recently put two and two together, literally yesterday, and realized a lot of folks in the Caribbean have British names, like their names are Mary, 
Helen, like I said, Kathleen is my mom's name, Charles. You know what I'm saying? Names like this. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, now I get it. Why you were using what I thought were these random names, but they weren't random to you. So start out with, hi, Helen. Pleasure to meet you. Hope you're having a lovely day. And then continue onward, right? Let me know if that works for you. I would also add in, after my, hey, Helen, hope you're having a great day. I'm in the process of deciding between a couple of locations. I like yours. Let's add that in there so she knows she's not the only one and you have some leverage. And then continue on with my suggestion, all right? Another option for a discount is if you're a photographer, offer to take updated images for them, all right? I mean, you're not gonna know if they need updated images. Sometimes they have new furniture. Sometimes you can just see right off bat that their images are questionable so go ahead offer your services all right and offer it for a discount and then my personal advice if you're going to be doing photography for their space as soon as you get in the space take the pictures so that you can just relax and enjoy your life after and you don't have to worry about adjusting things to make sure they look good for the picture i told my person to arrange the place in the way she would like it to look for the images and then i took the pictures and then i lived my life Tip number four. This last tip lends itself to, once again, getting a more budget-friendly option. So I would definitely say book early, book as early as you can. And the thing about Barbados is it's becoming even more popular, okay? So if you can book months in advance, go ahead and do that. One, you'll have way more options. And two, you'll have way more budget-friendly options, whatever your budget is, all right? And of course, if you're booking an off-season, then that's going to be cheaper as well. And I believe their off-season is May to July, and it might be in the fall as well, I'm not sure. But I know they're definitely heavy, like around, I think, February to April or January to April. All right, so let me show you guys where I was staying. Ooh, one more thing. A friend had suggested this to me. If you can, try some different locations. Like I mentioned, the South Coast and the West Coast, you could definitely spend a week or a month if you're spending a couple of months in Barbados on the West Coast just to see how you liked it. I did a weekend there and it was cool with my friends for my birthday. We had a great time. You know, of course, like I said, I concluded the South was best for me, but at least I got that experience. So that's some advice to you as well. As long as you don't mind picking up your stuff and packing up your stuff again, which I actually don't like. So I think I personally would not move more than twice. But if you don't mind, go ahead and do your thing. Now, before I continue, if this is my second or third video that you've watched, go ahead and subscribe. You might as well, because you enjoy it, okay? So go ahead and click that subscribe button, click the notification so you always know about my videos and when they premiere. Yeah, because why not? Go ahead, click subscribe. All right, so the first place I was staying was Coverly. Coverly is like this big community. It's kind of like a, apparently it was supposed to be where older people lived initially, but now it belongs or houses mostly Ross students, university students on one side, and then the, on the other side, are people who aren't students. So I saw a range of people, honestly, mostly families. Um, there were some single folks there as well, but I didn't feel out of place basically, because once again, you're getting the mixture of people. But the great thing about Coverly is it almost feels like a gated community. And so if you're someone who's like really hesitant about being in another country by yourself, you know, that's like the safest you can get. And Barbados is pretty safe by the way, but that's the safest you can get. They've got security cameras everywhere. People know who you are because they see you walking around it's so safe that people be jogging at like 12 a.m oh and the great thing about this area is they also have restaurants these people ain't even paying me to say this <laughs> they have restaurants in a section like in the little hub they also have i don't know what that's called like the center of the community and some pretty good restaurants actually there's like a space where you can sit down and eat kind of where everyone like comes together they also have banks yeah, two banks. And they have a fitness center and they have a grocery store, which is the Massey grocery store, which is the more expensive grocery store if you're watching my video on my grocery shopping. But the great thing is it's accessible once again, and it's like a five minute walk from most places in Coverly. So I really like that space. Here's a preview into my space and what it looked like. Here's the living room. Most of the houses are around this size. It's my understanding they're building newer houses that have a larger space. You know, check out what you see on Airbnb. This was my bedroom. 
And then here's like a little tour of it and what it looked like. Now, I really appreciated having a two bedroom. I only took the space because it aligned with my budget or what I wanted to spend rather. But having a two bedroom, y'all, was so perfect because it gave me an office space to work in. Now, I did realize later that I enjoyed working in their like central area where the restaurants were outside more, but it was great to have both options. So that's one space. Now, here's my West Coast space that I was staying in with my friends. This is it, what it looked like. These are the bedrooms. This was the downstairs area where our living room was and we also ate here. The kitchen, the outside pool. And yes, it was like a much bigger space, of course, because I was splitting it with like five other people, but it was lovely. And I think it was a pretty good price for vacation, vacation homes. It gets pricier when you're staying there for months. And honestly, the pricing to me is comparable to New York pricing. So just be aware. Just to add some. And then my final space, and I'm showing you all these spaces because they were highly requested, but to be honest and smart, I didn't wanna show them when I was actually staying here. Now this space was actually my favorite space, um, and I'll go ahead and link the Airbnbs that are available, which I think these last two are below, but this one I really liked because it felt like a home. There was a pool right outside and it was very close to Hoogan Villa, which had the beach and sandals where the beach is. And so it was nice to be able to walk down the street and stay at the beach there. So I recommend this space. The owner was great, very accommodating. And yeah, it was, and it was super clean. That is my space that I recommend and I recommend the West Coast space. Okay, so there you guys have it. I gave you what you've been asking for. I hope this is helpful. If you have more questions, let me know. I'm happy to answer them and I always answer all the questions in the comments, all right? And comment below to let me know which Airbnb you like the best. Do you think you'd be staying on the South Coast or the West Coast? And which space would you stay in? Tell me. Did you enjoy that video? Do you want some more information on Barbados so you can make some good decisions? Go ahead and watch that video. Go ahead, click. Enjoy.